Hi, my name is Ann Tilly and welcome to my home sewing studio. I am in the middle of a huge life change. My partner and I built our own tiny house on wheels and we just moved it last week, which means that we are moving out of the rental house that we've been in for longer than we wanted. And it means that I am going to lose this amazing home sewing studio that I have used ever since we moved in, so eight years. And I just wanted to take a moment to document what I have set up here, share it with y'all, the things that I have learned about maximizing a relatively small space and what has really worked for me. This uh, building is a detached building behind our rental house. It was an unfinished building when we moved in, uh, but it had a dry roof. It was probably some sort of smokehouse or storehouse for the tobacco farm that was working here several decades ago. It's been defunct for a long time, but um, it just had like a shed door. These French doors were part of the original home and they were stored in this building. And so to actually be able to use them brought some light into the space and it used something that had no other use otherwise. They're not really the world's best outdoor doors. Um, they are getting a little bit of weather damage, but bitch, I'm about to be moving out, so what's up? Okay, anyways, I paid a contractor to fix this up. We probably put in about $3,500, which was like, but $3,500 over nine years has been well worth the investment. It's a nine foot wide by 15 foot long building. So it's not very big, but I feel like I've really maximized the space for what I needed to use it for. All right, come on in. Okay, so the first thing that I did when I set up my home sewing studio was to get the right equipment. So my goal was I was working in production at a jean factory and I really wanted to be able to make jeans at home. So that meant that I wanted an industrial single needle machine and an industrial serger. So we have um, a textile factory liquidator warehouse here in North Carolina because there were so many textile factories in here that closed. So I was able to go and tell them what I needed. They were able to set up the machine the way I wanted it. This particular one is a Brother Excedra. It has these features, I never use them, but it does have some automatic features that I love and I requested and had them install, which was um, an automatic thread cutter and needle positioner. Y'all gonna like this. <laughs> Ta-da! I got my husband to make this for me. What I wanted more than anything was the organization for the bobbins but then he took it a step further and made little cutouts for all of my regular tools. So I have my super tiny screwdriver for my bobbin cases. I have a bigger one for changing out feet. And then this is a total luxury is I have a second and third bobbin case for my machine. And I actually keep this one set for thicker weight thread. And when I need to switch out on my machine, instead of changing the tension on my one bobbin case over and over again, I'll just switch to the one that's set up for the thicker thread. Since I have limited space, what I end up doing is I end up putting my home sewing machines on this table and I just keep the pedals down there and I can just pull out the pedal and set up here and work, which is not ideal because I have to kind of work around the, the built-in pedal for the industrial machine. Hopefully in my next studio I can have a dedicated table for all my home sewing machines. The other thing I got was an industrial serger. This one is a five thread, so it has a chain stitch, but honestly, I don't really need the chain stitch. I just really just have it as a three thread, and I got a really good deal on this thing. It was like 400 bucks. I mean, not everybody has the space to have a sewing machine like this, but if you do, they're just, they're just great. They're, they just don't do stupid things that home machines do, and you can sew thick things. They're just really stable machines. I'm a big fan. 
The other thing I got was a dress form. So wolf was what we used at fashion school. So that was kind of what I knew. This one was one that they had at the liquidator warehouse. And I thought, you know, it was kind of a good standard sample size. And it was just, it was what they had used. So I felt like I got a good deal on that. I have a lot of people ask me if they should get a dress form or what kind of dress form. And honestly, like I don't really use it. The thing that it works best for is to scare the shit out of people when they come in here for the first time. So it's like my bodyguard, but I just don't really do a lot of sewing work that requires draping. And it's one of those things where when you really need a dress form, you can't get by with anything other than something like this. But if you're making a lot of ready to wear clothing, or if you're not, if you're working from patterns, like you probably don't really need something like this. I also have, you know, random bolt storage in the corners here and here. I've got enough uh, denim for a hundred years. Hit me up if you need some. The big components I felt like when I was setting up my studio was a serger, a single needle machine, an iron, ironing board, and a work table. To me, that's like the most important things. I am a huge fan of the gravity fed steam iron situation. For me, my home iron just kept leaking water all the time and it drove me nuts. And as well as I started to develop a little bit of arm pain from having to like set the iron back every time I would use it. And so the nice thing about this iron is it stays on a silicone mat and you can just slide it over and use it and put it back and you're not doing this me measure that kind of started to tweak my shoulder and arm a little bit. So I do wish that this ironing board was a little bit taller to accommodate my height. And I also wish that I had a standing mat here. So I think in, for my next studio, what I'd really love to do is have a longer standing mat for here because you can see that I only have one tiny spot to stand and then maybe take this one and make this be the ironing mat. So, you know, you learn these things as you work. So the table, this is not, like my ideal choice would be to have a bolt depth table because the problem is, is that I can't put like a full bolt on here and it will hang off the edge. But this was kind of what we thought would be the maximum size for this space. And so that was sort of the compromise of the space. And this table has worked great, but it does kind of suck when I can't get much deeper. In my dream studio, hopefully in my next studio, I will have at least a four foot uh, wide table that I can walk all the way around would be like extra, extra bonus. So, and I think, I think I'm gonna get it. So guys, I'm excited. And I'm excited to still have this table. Like, like I think what we're gonna do in the next setup is I'm gonna have this table and this can be great for like pattern work. And then I can have my floating table in the middle of the room that I can actually do my cutting work on. And you know, I will brag and say that my table is usually this clear most of the time, but that's mainly just because when you work with fabric, you got to have a clear table or it's everything's gonna fall off of it. So anyways. That's just by default. I'm like, I literally think I'm like, I'm like 50-50. Like I'm organized and tidy and clean and then I'm also chaos. So usually what happens is when I finish a project, I leave a huge mess in here and I close the doors and walk away and I'm like excited about whatever it is I made. And then when I come in here to start the next project, like I have to tidy up so that I am ready, like mentally ready for my next project. So that's usually how I'm moving. And then of course, if you're filming, then you're really gonna clean up, so. The other thing that we did when we built this studio was we set up this wall of shelves. It's changed a little bit from the way that I thought I was gonna originally use this. I originally thought that I would always keep this surface clear and I'd be able to just set my paper patterns here while I'm working. And of course, if you've got a height here, it's gonna just catch clutter. Like, you know, just the important things, right? <laughs> so I have lots of cute little knickknacks and um, little organizational tools. You know, you can't have too many cute pin cushions. What, like why? Why am I like this? Why can I not throw away this yarn? I don't know. I have like all cotton, I have very thin threads, woolly nylon threads, and then I have kind of my Tex 40 kind of all purpose threads in the middle. That's the bulk of what I use. 
And then I also have my super heavyweight threads here at the end. You can see my like denim top stitching threads and whatnot. I'm hoping in my next studio that I'll be able to set up like a wall mount system for these because uh, they really kind of hog up a lot of space, but I want to be able to see what color options I have. And then really these shelves have become somewhat chaos, somewhat organization. I've got kind of my elastics here. I've got kind of my woven fabrics and kind of the most recent acquisitions. And of course, they're piling up. I just love having lots of zippers on hand for projects. Distilled water for my iron. Random container of rickrack and ribbon. I've got a bunch of this silk in here. This is padding for the dress form. This is quilters cotton divided by color. I have tried to pare down knowing that we were going to move, but I, I am kind of one of those people that's just like, but this is useful, like, and it's beautiful. And like, and if I don't keep it, then I just have to throw it away. And like, that's the environment. And that's the death spiral that I go through all the time. So I also set up this teeny little hanging rack storage for my patterns. And it, this gets filled up really quickly. So I actually have set up a whole nother rolling rack in my office in the house, which actually has already been moved out onto the property where my future studio is gonna go. I can't wait to show you all that. But uh, I have amassed quite a bit of patterns as a pattern maker for myself, for my own clothing lines, and as a freelance pattern maker for other designers. I have quite a lot of patterns. And so what I have found is that when this starts to get full, I just clear the whole thing out and put it in the office. And then as I need patterns, I will pull them back and bring them back in here. The other kind of more recent thing I've been doing is I started keeping this bag of fabric scraps. I don't really make a ton of waste in here except for fabric waste. I don't wanna throw it away, but I don't really, I keep thinking that if I save it, that I'll suddenly discover how to recycle it. <laughs> and, like this is again, my conundrum. So I'm probably gonna throw this away because I'm moving and there's only so much bandwidth that I have for figuring out something like how to fix the global garbage crisis. Um, but I have found that just having this in the studio is really great because if you just need a quick scrap, you're not going through your trash can that also has other dumb things in it. And you just have like a dedicated fabric scrap bag. Hit me up in the comments if any of y'all have your own uh, fabric scrap dilemma and what you do to try to mitigate that waste. I'd love to know. Another cool decorative feature that I did was when I first started working in here, I was doing quilting for hire. I set up this like quilt design board where I basically just got some pieces of foam core board and then covered them in batting. And what's nice is that like fabric can stick to this really easily. And so I was, I set this up for quilting, but really it's just kind of become a general like design wall pin board. Another thing that I would do differently in a studio is I have this, just this one overhead light that's centered. And the problem is, is that when I'm working at my table, especially at night and I lean forward, I'm like shadowing myself on my own table. And so I did add this lamp here. The other thing I love is I have this great rolly bin that I got for free that I pilfered from the side of the road. And I use this to organize all my knitwear because you know, knitwear is such a bitch. Like it doesn't stay folded. It's floppy, especially the Jersey stuff. So this is, I just pile it all in here and I do kind of subdivide a little bit. Like this is all ribbing and this is all like one type of like stretch jersey. I do kind of try to organize it, but mostly I'm just like pulling things out and looking for it when I need it. Again, another example of like my disorganized organization. It's working, it's working. I also, when I knew that we were gonna be moving, I started to just, get bins and just generally label the types of materials in here and just kind of macro organize my fabrics because I don't necessarily need to see these things. I find that it's like, if I have an idea for a project and I know what type of material I need, then I can come in here and open this up and pick out what I have. If y'all have pets, 
you know how obnoxious it can be where they just want to get up on top of whatever project you're working on. Especially for me, it's like homeboy loves getting on whatever paper and if I'm working on a pattern, it's such a pain. So one thing I did was I put this old wool on top of these so that they would have a space for to jump and be able to sleep and be with me without being on my work surface or on my sewing machine. And that they actually are using it, which works great. The other thing is, if you can't tell that I'm sweating my ass off, there's no central heat or air in here. And there's like no moving air because the only thing in here is these two tiny little windows in the back that are stationary. Really the summertime is the worst because if you've got the iron on, whoo, bitch, you be heating up. The winter is not so bad because a little space heater can really regulate this room really quickly. And two, like, if you've got, like, sweaty hands and you're, like, working with fabric, it's like, pfft, bye. So, oh, another thing that I love in this studio is this cool, I think it's from, like, the 60s, this, like, wall organization. I especially love that it has all the North Carolina like the vintage North Carolina stickers. This has become a great little catch-all for little things that I can see and grab really easily and they don't have to live on my table. This is kind of a fun little way to kind of organize my little things. A little uh, mirror, you gotta have a mirror in your studio. This was actually in the building when we moved in. I just kept it, it just leaned up against the wall. I don't know about y'all, but it's always been a dream for me to just have the dream studio. Like it, it is a dream, right? And so I think that this studio was like totally well on its way, but I feel like I'm excited for the next one and the potential that I'm gonna have there. For now, I'm gonna be going into the garage and hopefully I can get it set up to where it serves me in the interim. It might serve me in the long run. And if that's the case, great. But if not, we're gonna build a whole original building for me. Can you freaking believe the potential of having your own building made exactly for your needs? So I'm, I've am i started my list of everything that I want on my dream studio. So wish me luck. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite organizational tools or what your must haves are for your sewing studio. I would love to hear other people's thoughts and opinions. And um, yeah, until then, happy sewing. Mwah.